everyone, welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We are not in the Palo Alto studio. We are in Napa Valley for a special CUBE event. And we have a great CUBE alumni guest remoting in from Seattle, Napa, Seattle, Ben Kat Krishnamachari, CEO and co-founder of Monte Cloud CUBE alumni. Ben Kat, welcome back to the CUBE. Great to see you. It is great to see you again, John. Thank you for taking the time. So we've had previous conversations on theCUBE. You guys were advanced technology partnered with AWS and startup showcases going on again. We're back for a revisit there for a special session. We're going to go into deep dive on Monty Cloud. You've had tremendous success with very large enterprises with your product. Uh, congratulations. And you're just emerging really into rapid growth. Take a minute to explain uh, for the viewers who is Monty Cloud and what's going on. Uh, sure thing, John. So we are an autonomous cloud operations company. Like you called, we are also an advanced technology partner, a public sector partner, and an Amazon certified cloud management partner. What we do is we help IT teams simplify their cloud operations. With our platform, our customers, without adding any specialized cloud skills or adding any uh, multiple point tools, they can still enable their teams to provision, manage, operate their cloud, and reduce their ongoing cloud operations cost by up to seventy percent. That's what we do for our customers. You guys are solving a real problem that that's emerging very quickly. It's actually more of an opportunity, less of a problem, but I means a problem if you don't address it. And that is the cloud migration is going next level. Meaning, people are re-platforming to the cloud with cloud operations, but now they're starting to leverage the cloud services and there's more and more coming on every day. If you look at what serverless is doing and the impact in microservices, just everything is changing fast and people are refactoring their businesses with cloud services. This is where it starts to get into what they call day two operations, where you got to be day one every day and create innovation, but now you got this day two where reliability, security, um, new things have to be nailed down and secured and stabilized. And so this is a big trend. You guys have a solution here. Could you take a minute and talk about the specific problem that you see customers and how you guys solve them? Sure thing. So um, customers, like you rightly say, John, they're rapidly adopting the cloud. And what we are seeing here is, there is a challenge of not just onboarding and consistent provisioning, which they perform on uh, the metaphorical day one. They are also burdened with multiple operations, like you called out, right? Uh, keeping the security of your application uh, high, uh, compliance, uh, maintaining visibility into who's using what, why it's some things are costing uh, more or sometimes sometimes they're not costing appropriately, right? Having a position on all of that is now an increasing burden and a responsibility on the IT team. And the IT teams are increasingly being held accountable to the business objectives because business objectives are getting closely tied with cloud and digital transformation. That's the area we help and solve. So I want to ask you one of the questions that's come up a lot, and this is, and I don't mean to put you on the spot here, Ben Cat, but I think it's important to address. A lot of people say, hey, I'm buying into this, this direction. I just don't have the staff. My IT guys can't be trained fast enough. I got them on a reskilling track. I got to find some talent. This is becoming not just how to provision and stand up applications, put them in the cloud and grow them. Talent, the talent equation. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you see that problem being solved and how, what are you guys doing to help there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I might skip some things to go directly uh, to some of the value we add, right? Uh, with our platform, um, imagine adding a highly skilled cloud solutions architect in under 10 minutes to your uh, teams. That's uh, one of the value of our platform. Customers are trying to hire more and more cloud solution architects. They're trying to upskill their own team members so that they can enable the rest of the company to consume the cloud safely, which means a cloud solutions architect role is to not only build the uh, safe building blocks that others can reuse, but also put governance guardrails and drive for accountability so that developers can move fast. That's one of the areas customers are struggling to hire and upskill. With our platform, within 10 minutes, you can turn on uh, autonomous cloud solution architect which comes and helps you fast track provisioning. Customers can deploy uh, any kind of application pattern uh, from networking to data services to um, server-based or container-based applications. We have pre-built, well-architected solutions in the platform that acts like your own cloud solutions architect. We address that skill gap immediately with our platform on the day one aspect of things. 
Yeah, I love it. It's like, you know, the old joke, AI, AI bots or bots are automating things. You're essentially automating like key specialized roles that traditionally were expensive and hard to find talent at that level. So I think that's a major um, uh, wave coming and I think you guys are on top of it. So uh, definitely want to hear more about that. I do want to get your thoughts while I have you here about cloud operations, day one operations, day two operations. Ben Kat, define for me what you consider day one operations. Yeah, uh, day one operations involve helping your teams consume the cloud and fast track your digital transformation with an ability to have developers move fast, right? That's kind of day one, right? Uh, the top down leadership decides, let's go to the cloud. They have to enable teams to consume it and safely. That is an area we help. One uh, typical thing we've learned in our conversations with customers, John, is this, right? It's very expensive to let teams provision like the wild, wild west, right? And then later pull back control, uh, later drive for accountability. Uh, oftentimes we see that customers end up in this part where they wonder why this is costing them so much more than they originally thought. A lot of that is because consuming the cloud from day one itself has to be thought through, has to have well-architected principles in mind. So we help in that area. Uh, we call this shifting left, right? Um, customers, if they, uh, the best way, right? The best way to consume the cloud and the right way to do it is to ensure that when you provision itself, there is a notion of well-architected principles in place, security, compliance, cost are being uh, addressed in the provisioning aspects. So we help there. For example, a Fortune 100 customers for us, right? Um, they were looking to fast track their application modernization and they were under pressure to do that. They used Monticler's pre-built templates, which are well-architected. Their teams were able to fast track provisioning of the resources, enable the developers with the CI CD pipeline that they needed, and they could move their application fast. The key thing here is post moving the application, they found that the approach we took to solving the day one problem automatically reduces the amount of time they need to spend to drive for who owns the resources, why is it costing so much, all those problems go away to a certain degree. If you think about day one the right way, that's one area we help with, and that's how we think about day one, reduce the ongoing burden from day one itself. Day one's great, you give them a blank check to provision all the services and next thing you know, you rack up a big bill, the engineers are building and they go, wait a minute, what do we build? Great stuff. First of all, engineers want to get access. That's critical and we know that. That's where the innovation comes from. Right. Now I want you to talk about day two operation because this, this is where it starts to get really interesting when you start to rein it in. You know the old expression, let chaos reign and then reign in the chaos. So right. define day two operations for us. What does day two operations mean uh, for you? Okay, so uh, this is our deep, uh, you know, uh, hypothesis that was driven by really rich conversations customers, right? Uh, ongoing operations in the cloud is the responsibility of multiple teams. And the cloud providers are expecting consumers and the customers in this case to have a shared portion of their responsibility, right? Security is a shared responsibility. Compliance is a shared responsibility. Cost management is a shared responsibility. And then the ongoing uptime and MTTR, like the mean time to resolution, they're all responsibilities that are wholly sitting on the customer side. All of this put together impact the bottom line of the business because uh, more and more businesses are now cloud businesses powered by cloud applications. Managing this entire set of problems and challenges is what we call as day two operations. One of the things you guys have been known for uh, in the industry, in your customer base and within some of the uh, geek community is you guys turn IT teams into cloud powerhouses. That's been said. What does that mean? What, can you take me through that? Because I mean, we know what IT teams do. They put provision gear, they'd be mostly on premises and they move to the cloud. They still got to do all the things that IT tasks to do, but then they got cloud and they got automation. So, but explain to me how you guys have transformed IT teams into cloud powerhouses. Uh, sure. So um, maybe a customer example will help, right? Uh, one of our uh, Fortune funded large, you know, global customer, before they adopted cloud, 
they had a five member team watching over a farm of servers, right? About 10,000 servers for compliance needs. Their position was to move those servers to the cloud and in, a, in essence, move the application to the cloud and continue to provide compliance to their entire organization. In that, they started upskilling their five member team. When they met Monty Cloud, we offered them a solution that not only help them govern those servers in the cloud with a very simple no code approach. We also gave them four of their headcount back. They were able to repurpose four members on the team to other projects because we attached them, uh, we attached with them a compliance bot. Uh, we asked this question, right, to customers. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be awesome if you were able to quickly add a cloud operations engineer, a cloud security engineer, a cloud compliance engineer, to every application in a dedicated manner. Customers go, how do we do that, right? Well, we have autonomous bots that have been uh, built for this purpose and they're comprehensive real-time uh, bots that customers can fine tune to their environments. And it's as if you added a dedicated cloud compliance engineer. In this particular case, this uh, large customer is now operating a 10,000 plus served farm with Monticlose compliance bot with another individual on the team and the other four individuals were given back to other projects. This is what we mean by empowering our customers and making that cloud team, the traditional IT teams into cloud powerhouses. They can do more with less and they can keep track of their cloud consumption in the right way. And they can do that without having to write a single line of code. That's what our platforms promises. Awesome, well, great stuff. As enterprise buyers are out there looking at solutions, you know, they're always trying to, you know, separate the winners from the, the, the not so good winners, if you will. I want to be, I want to be polite there. Jerry Chen recently has been talking about this paper castles in the cloud where you can build moats within the cloud and build on other people's clouds. Um, so that brings up the question that I wanted to ask you about Monty cloud, your competitive advantage and how you compare vis-a-vis -vis the competition and how should customers who are potentially evaluating your platform and your services look at you long-term, are you going to, you, what, what kind of value proposition are you offering them? Um, Cause that's always top of mind enterprise. You know, these guys going to be around. What are they, are they like me? Are they going to solve my problem? Are they going to help me transform? Will they deliver the value? So the question is, how are you guys competing? Can you address that please? Yeah, uh, like we like we have been uh, sharing, you know, more than competition, it's, it's a customer, right? There is so much more customer challenge to solve and solve it in a way that's most meaningful to customers. The competition is good to have because they sometimes show us the way, but customers really tell us uh, both their stated needs and their implied needs that we find out, right? Uh, um, John, we are the only comprehensive cloud management platform that enables our customers in every step of the cloud transformation, right? You will find, uh, you'll find in the market point tools that help with security, point tools that help with compliance, uh, provisioning infrastructure as code solutions that you have to learn and write code and do. There's a lot going on. We are the only comprehensive platform that thinks about customers from the day one, from onboarding to provisioning and consumption, to governance, to security, compliance, and ongoing operations with cost and context in mind. We are the only platform that offers that to our customers. And all of that without the customers having to write a single line of code, they can fast track as if they onboarded a cloud center of excellence in their team with the Monticular platform. That's our biggest differentiation. And this comes from deep understanding of the customer's interconnected problems, because you don't only solve provisioning and then forget uh, context. You don't solve only context and cost and forget security. All of these are interconnected challenges. So you need an interconnected solution. That's what we have built. I think that interconnected systems mindset really is about the bridge to the future. And if you can be with the customer together and build that bridge and cross over together, that to me is a relationship oriented uh, uh, value proposition. And I think that's really needed in these transformative markets. So congratulations, I love the mindset there. I got to ask you, I know you got a lot of customers and you can't say their names on camera, a lot of large enterprises. Um, give us a taste of some of the things they say to you. Like, hey, Ben Cat, I love your service because blank. What are they? What are some of the anecdotal sayings that customers say about Monty Cloud? Oh, we have some customers we can talk about. So some of the customers are going to come back on the stage. Actually, St. Louis University 
is going to be coming on the QB event that's coming up soon, right? So we have a bunch of customers we can talk about. Some customers we are, you know, deeply working with them and uh, we've solved some problems for them. So what we typically hear from customers is this, right? Uh, a lot of vendors come in and, and ask our teams to upskill and they teach our teams how to manage cloud. Uh, your solution helps us focus on our KPIs. That's what we repeatedly hear from customers, right? Being able to help the customer, look, it's not the customer's uh, you know, uh, primary focus to build and maintain a cloud center of excellence that also involves dealing with multiple point tools, that involves constantly keeping up with the growing footprint, that involves upskilling the team constantly. Uh, you know, it's great that you have a cloud focus, but every customer that we've engaged with, even the large customers, tell us that the fact that they can go back to focusing on their KPIs, whether the application is providing services to their customers, how much uptime is, uh, is, is directly impacting their business, what are the cost of a per transaction? Those are the important things they really want to focus on. So consistently, our customers are able to come back and validate that when Monte Cloud gets involved with them, they're able to shift their focus back to their business as opposed to trying to focus on things that is basically becoming an essential problem they need to solve. That's a common theme we get as feedback and we continuously learn from that and continue to improve that. Awesome, great stuff. Thank you. great to have you on again, the CUBE conversation, get the update. Um, while I got you, take a minute to put a plug in for the company. Where are you guys at on status, state of the company? Are you guys looking to hire? Um, Sound bites, anything you want to share, give a quick, quick minute plug for Monty Cloud. Yeah, uh, sure thing, John. Hey, we're a startup. We're always hiring. We're always trying to find the smartest people that you want to work with. We want people to come in and kind of show us what to do, right? So uh, give us a shout out. From a growth perspective, John, the market is uh, you know booming, right? We are uh, we are with a, with a small uh, team, which I will give a shout out to my team, right? We are like 23, 20, 23 member team, right? being able to go deliver to a world-class cloud management platform expectations and deliver to Fortune 100 companies means we are thinking about the problem space deeply. So those who are interested in that kind of, you know, uh, accelerated delivery to customers, uh, you know, do more with less attitude uh, are welcome to engage with us. Uh, from a self-plug for the company perspective, uh, here's what we offer. We offer a free trial today our platform can be turned on and start delivering value to customers in under 10 minutes. People can go to uh, montecloud.com, sign up for our free trial, connect their cloud accounts. Within a few minutes, they're going to get free recommendations on where they can optimize cost, where they can improve security, what are the compliance issues they can solve, and they'll get full visibility into their environment, all in just about a few clicks. And that is the value prop our platform offers. On an ongoing basis, they can further customize the platform to their needs. So I invite everybody to go try it at montecloud.com. All right, Ben Cat, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. This is a great example of, of how the cloud can enable startups to be a supplier for the biggest companies in the world. Monte Cloud, again, a startup successful in the cloud. This is what it's all about, the new model, new, new refactoring. It's the cloud. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching this CUBE conversation.